Okay, so from the worksheet on the front side, we have this chart, and the ball started at 16. It came down, bounced once, came down, bounced one, went up to eight, came down again. This is the second bounce now. That was one. This is two. Two. Wow, that won't write. All right, second bounce comes up to four now. So what ends up being is I write a four in here. And the way we get that is we use the rebound ratio, which, again, in the previous problems, we figured out that if you put the maximum height after the bounce over the previous maximum height and then simplify that fraction, you'll get the rebound ratio. In this case, 8 goes into 8 one time. 8 goes into 16 twice. So the simplified fraction is 1 half. So if I use that, I can find that Eight, half of 8 is going to be 4. And then I start with that height over here, and I tell you half of that height is 2. So on the other side, we have something different to look at. This one actually starts at 250. So when I start filling out this graph, I write 250 here, because before the ball bounces, when the person's standing at the top of the building holding it, they're at 250 already. And since there's no bounce yet, it's just at 250. Now, when they let it go, it was at 250, and it falls down and bounces once. And now, this time, we know that it gets up to a height. But they don't tell us right now what it is. But if you read the next one, there's on the, this is the first bounce here. Right here is the first bounce. So it's going to come down and bounce again. And this is going to be the second bounce, right? And it tells us that after the second bounce, it gets up to 90. And it tells us that... Before the first bounce, right here it says the maximum height was 150. Before the second bounce, it was 150. So here's the second bounce. If I go before it, I put 150 there. So now I know that I can put 150. That must have 150 must be the height that the ball rebounded from. So after the first bounce, it must have reached 150. Because after that, it went to the second bounce. And I know by the table that the second bounce started at 150. So that means that the number here must be 150. Now I have enough information to find out the rebound ratio. Recall that for the rebound ratio, I'm going to take the highest number that it gets on the bounce. So after the first bounce here, the highest it got was 150. And I'll put that over the other, the previous highest number. So over 250. So I'm getting my fraction is going to be 150 over 250. Okay, I got to reduce this fraction. So I know that they're divisible by 50. 50 goes into 153 times, and 50 goes into 255 times, giving me three fifths. If you want to check and make sure you have the right fraction, look at the next one. So over here, that was 90 and 150. It got up to 90, and previously it was 150. So I put 90 over 150, and it should give me three fifths. 90 over 150. Okay. So then you got to simplify that fraction, and you know that the tens can go away. Well, you can do it with thirties. Um, Thirty times three gives you ninety, so we get three. And thirty goes into one fifty when it goes in five times, so you get three fifths. You could also do it by tens if you like cross this out. Then maybe you can see that fifteen over twenty five is three fifths. Nine over fifteen is three fifths. So there you go. That's another way to think about it. All right. So we know now that our rebound ratio is three-fifths. We also know what to put over here. In this box is 90. Above the 3, we know it's going to be the starting height is 90. But now we have to figure out what this rebound height is. you got to find out how to fill out this box. Since I know that my rebound ratio... Rebound ratio is three fifths. And I know that I need to find the number the next ratio, like I need to find what it got to, right? I'm trying to fill out the box above bounds three. I know that its starting height was ninety, meaning that that was the highest of the previous. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a ninety on the bottom. I don't know what this number is yet. I don't know what that number is. So I got to figure that out. There's two ways to solve this. The first is to multiply 3 times 90 and divide by 50. So 3 times 90 
gives you 270. And then if you divide that by 5, by five goes in there 5 times, that gives you 25 here, gives you 2 remainder, bring down 0, gives you 20, and you get 54. That tells me that I should put a 54 right there. Another way to do it is to look at the number, the fractions 3 over 5 is equal to 90 on the bottom and something on the top, right? So what number times 5 gives me 90? Well, if you do your division, 90 divided by 5 is 18. So 5 times 18 gives me 90. So 3 times 18 will give me the number over here, which gives me 54. This way, though, this way you can do it and it works. But this way is going to be easier when you try to get into the other parts of the problem. Multiplying the top number by the bottom number on the opposite side of the equal sign and then dividing by 5. And I'll, I can show you why that works in the next step. Okay, so if we don't know x, x is what we don't know, and I want to find out what, what that number is. If I want to solve for x, the first thing I can do is multiply both sides by 90. And that's going to get rid of the fraction. So the 90 cancels out here, and I get the 1 there. And then on this side over here, if I don't do the cross multiplication, cancel out the 5, I end up with 90 times 3 all over 5 equal to x. So in essence, I could just multiply these two together and divide by this number, which is what you're doing here. 